Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Glad to have you here. Today we have a Empire Bretonian matchup, which I feel like is pretty common, but this time I'm taking Bretonia against uh, this guy's Empire. Um, and so, um, I went really heavy on the Cav, of course, because it's Bretonia. Um, and I brought a pretty decent main line here. I have three Battle Pilgrims for dealing with fodder units, and I have two Foot Squires for dealing with enemy armor, like greatswords, um, and basically anything else that they have. Cav, they also are pretty good against. Um, leading my army, I have the Fey Enchantress on her unicorn, with all of her abilities, I think. Um, and she has Regrowth and Earthblood. Supporting her, and kind of running around with her, are these Grail Knights, and I brought these guys to counter any um, flying goon squad action, or sniping of the Fey Enchantress action um, that the Empire might bring. Um, in this matchup, he did not bring any air, so these guys were wasted, but um, if they did, I would keep them in reserve and kind of run them in, as an escort for the Fey Enchantress. Um, make sure she does not die, um, because that, her Mortis Engine effect is going to be very important for winning this frontline engagement. Behind them, I do have two bow Peasant Bowmen with Pox Arrows. I brought these guys because um, if it was an enemy like, or an army like I usually bring against Bretonia, it would have some handgunners, and these guys would be great at sniping them. Um, they also would be great at shooting into the flanks or even the front of greatswords um, because the poison would slow them down even more and allow more shots to be fired. Um, and once the battle's engaged, the poison doesn't hurt. Um, up in the air, I do have some Royal Pegasus Knights, and I felt confident with this being my only air force because of my healing with Lord of Life, and my peasant bow support. Um, yeah, because of those two reasons. So I felt confident just bringing one of these guys, and I felt like I would have air superiority here um, with just these guys. Uh, over on this far flank, I do have two questing knights for dealing with great swords and enemy cav. Just really a great option, powerful, pretty cheap for what they do. Um, really, really, really good unit. Um, and far over here, I do have some mounted yeomen who will be trying to poke around the flanks. So I brought these guys just for kind of a cheap, almost ambush style force. And so they will be very useful. I also have two of these um, just spearmen at arms to help out in the back lines, protect my archers. That's why I brought those guys. So over here in the kind of commanding hill position is this empire player. You can see he's got a rather strange setup. Um, he's got, but he does have a good infantry core. He's got three of these great swords here. So they'll, his armored, armor piercing infantry outnumbers mine. So that is a concern at the beginning of this battle. Um, he does have a main line of kind of four spearmen and then three halberdiers. So tons of anti-large um, and tons of armor piercing missiles here in the form of three hand gunners um, and the silver bullets. To support them and to make sure they do everything right, he does have a light wizard here who will be overcasting some nets. And um, since he went so wide with his infantry corps, um, I don't think he could afford to put Karl Franz on anything. Um, definitely a mistake here, um, but it is cheap. So that is um, one benefit of Karl Franz and putting him on the ground. Um, but he'll get knocked around by like, even the Fey Enchantress will be able to knock him over. Um, so definitely I think at least bringing him on a horse is a good move. And so we'll, we'll get started here. It doesn't start too quick. I'll be kind of moving up here and um, I do outrange him with my peasant bowman, so that is something to be aware of that I'm not going to go up that hill um, when I kind of have the longer range troops. I'm going to kind of force him to come down here, uh, but he's going to be a really good sport about it. Sorry about that, lowering the volume. He's going to be a good sport about it and kind of come down here um, and fight me instead of making me slog up this hill. So here you can see I kind of repositioned my line. Um, to what his original line was. I moved my foot squires over here, my grail pilgrims over here, um, but he also started <laughs> resetting his line. So um, lots of redeployment kind of thing going on here. You can see my mounted yeoman flanking far around. I'm going to try and get at some of these handgunners. Um, 
but with, with the net of Amontok around, it is going to be rather difficult. And I'm gonna, I see how far back his handgunners are, and they already have a shorter range. I'm just going to move my Peasant Bowman up here and get some free, nearly free pot shots here um, on these spearmen. Because any damage I could do now will be immensely helpful later. And you can see I'm also rotating my cavalry over here. He's kind of got a nice natural formation over here to defend his right flank. So I don't want to, I don't want to go near that. So I'm going to swing around here to the right to try and get in at some of these, this imp very impressive empire fi firing line. Here you can watch as my first poison arrows come in. So he does have the the variant with shields. It's a little bit more expensive, but it looks like it's actually going to help a little bit here. And you can see he's going to realize this and move up a bit. And really anything I shoot with these guys will be cost effective because they're so cheap. Um, I just kind of want to use all their ammo is how you get these guys to pay for themselves. There you can see doing some nice early damage on some greatswords. Now his silver bullets are approaching. Um, so I will be switching my targets. I'm getting a nice overlap here, hitting both units. I really need to get those hand those handgunners off the field if I want any chance if I have any chance of surviving this kind of this melee engagement that is definitely in his favor. You can see nice handgunner shots coming in there. Um, I am going to drop a comment on these guys. Let's see it. Boom! Getting some nice damage done there. And you can see I've almost, I've almost killed one of them. Um, but my peasant bowmen are routing. I still have one healthy one though. And uh, my mounted yeomen are skirting around his halberds. You see how far he pushed out his halberds here? Definitely a mistake. You could just keep them right next to your line and they'd be far more effective. They'd cover a much wider arc of the map. Um, so definitely something to be aware of. Uh, where am I? You can see my guys over here waiting and my spearmen coming over here just to kind of support. Wavering though, my peasant bowmen are back in the fight. So they try and open fire. And you can see I'm trying to match up my foot squires on his great swords my grail pilgrim, my battle pilgrims on his spearmen. And you can see my grail knight still in reserve. That was probably a mistake. He doesn't really have any um, way to get around my flanks here at this point. He's mostly infantry, so I could have totally just swung these guys around. Here my mounted yeomen are getting in his handgunners. My pegasus knights came in on these ones. Um, just because I saw a nice opening here. No cav to jump on me for doing that, so why not? you'll see now I'm focusing down the silver bullets. A net coming down in the middle is going to prevent the charge of the battle pilgrims. And here are my questing knights. Let's watch this. Oh, and that's the benefit of the net, is it stops anything that goes in there. So definitely a missed micro there. Um, it's going to save these, quest these um, great swords from a huge charge. Um, sadly, the net is not going to save these uh, silver bullets and so that's one of the most important things you can do when you are um, flanking around and there's a light wizard on the field do not keep your cav in the same place because they can both get netted down and you can quickly be um, turned on with like this firing line here you can see my mounted yeomen are um, eliminated because I left them in too long with the uh, Um but they will come back and they'll be able to clean up some of the troops his great swords are running towards the back my questing knights look like they're about to get surrounded, but I can pull out straight this way. Um, and you can see my Pegasus knights pulled out in the air, and uh, the handgunners are routing off the field. Now it's just the main line that I want to deal with. I'm getting nice shots in the back against these guys with my bowmen. So looking for the best targets for these guys, always. Some halberdiers coming around. Here come my Grail knights. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but my questing knight here, again, coming in for a charge. Just trying to punish these guys and get out before his halberd ears can finish me off. Again, just coming in. And I'm just going to keep going straight into the back of these guys. My questing knight pulling out as the halberd ears get in. And then I'll shoot them with my peasant bows because that's a perfect target. It'll slow them down, make it harder for them to catch my cavalry. Um, and so these guys are just a really great option against the Empire. Uh, really gives you some flexibility.
with the Pendant Bowman and the Arcs of Fire. Um, and again, you can see just running away from the Halberds, not letting that engagement go the way he wants it to. And there, I'm just taking the ones I want. So a nice charge in against the Great Swords, and I'm just going to pull out. Not take much damage there. So my Questing Knights still rove around. You can see cleaning up these remnants of the Hand Gunners. Can't let them come back and fire in to the cavalry as I'm attacking this main line. See, moving them a little too far. And uh, here come my Grail Knights. Great charge into these Great Swords. Another Shem's burning gaze there. My Pegasus Knights will watch them come in. Devastating charge. It's just going to hit their morale, and I'm um, trying to get them to route, and here come the Grail Knights. They're going to come in as well. And even though these guys are Halberd Ears, I feel pretty confident doing this because I am charging them in the um, Here come my Questing Knights as well, just really trying to break this. As you can see, shooting into the sides of these guys, finishing off these guys with a Comet. And this is just what the Peasant Bowmen are great at, is isolating these guys that are chasing my, uh, my, uh, my cavalry. But <laughs> and um, just especially spearmen usually don't have shields so you can do a ton of damage and the poison just slows them down which gives your cavalry more and more time to kind of do its thing but at this point there you can see it's going to admit defeat so you can see my uh, peasant bowmen definitely paying for themselves this one even chev chevroning up so was killing some important things, um, shooting great swords and halberd ears and very expensive units, um, and they were almost out of ammo, which is what you want. You can see my main line did not do super well. I'm pretty tattered uh, from that fight, um, but my cavalry force still very healthy. All of these guys very healthy, um, and they all got pretty decent kills here. Uh, the uh, Royal Pegasus Knights actually chevroning up too, which is a sign of uh, doing some good work. See my Fan Chantress getting zero kills there in the middle. I just kind of kept her central and uh, caused her magic aura to damage all those great swords and um, spearmen in the middle. Um, you can see here the hand gunners just not pulling their weight. Um, with all of my cav, I was just able to isolate them. And he didn't have any cav to keep my flyers and my cavalry um, engaged. Uh, and that would have been a, either a great place for a net of Amatok or a great place for some demi griff knights. Um, really punish the Bretonian for uh, coming in on you um, and attacking your ranged troops. Um, but great game to buy opponent, and um, thanks for watching. That's that.